You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir: Lucas's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right, <clears throat> but I can't get too distracted. This is a delicate topic I'm about to ask about. I should be respectful. Was there anything going on with Helen and her parents? From what we found out, it sounds like she had a good relationship with her mother, but we know next to nothing about her father. Do you know if there's anything regarding them that might have caused any distress? Did her dad die? I'm not sure how much help I can be. She didn't really like talking about her father too often, and she, but she loved to tell me what was up with her mother. I'm certain her father is alive, though. I heard her mention her mother's divorce on a phone once. A divorce? Do you know if it's recent or not? No, it was just something I heard in passing. It did sound like it upset her, though. She left immediately afterwards and canceled her next session, too. Did you know anything about her friends? Mercy and Quinn? Or her boyfriend, Conrad? Not really. They came with her sometimes and they were nice, but they only came for her. They all seemed really good friends, though. Even when they were fighting, she still cared about them. Friends just always get along. There's a sad tone in his voice, and I can't help but think back to how Lucas was acting when we first met Costia. It's like he, it's like he was scared to see him. They must have had a big falling out. Maybe I'll ask about it sometime, but it doesn't feel appropriate right now. Anything else? There's one thing. Mercy really didn't like Conrad. I don't know their story, but she looks like she wanted to kill him. She looked like she wanted to kill him. The official motive on the news was that she that he was cheating on Helena with her friends, but I really don't think so. But Mercy wouldn't go near him, and Quinn didn't look interested at all. Really? Then why did she do it? I don't know, Wallace, but Wallace, can you do me a favor? Of course, what is it? If you find out anything about what happened, can you let me know? We weren't very close, but I feel responsible. Just let me know if you find anything. Yeah, totally. As soon as I find out anything I'm interesting, I'll let you know. Thanks. I gotta go. Call me if there's anything else you need. Get Lucas to call me, too. I miss talking to him. I bet. You two have a lot of catching up to do, I'm sure. I'll catch you later. He gives a final grunt and the call ends, leaving me sitting alone with my thoughts. Many of them on Helena and just what really happened with her. <laughs> What Costia said is to be believed. There's a lot more going on with her than just a mental snap, and if the official motive is such a bust, then why did everyone die? My eyes linger on the diary, and there's a temptation there, but I know I shouldn't. I can hear Lee scolding me in my memories. After all the nightmares, too, it might not be the best idea. At the very least, this is a good. This is good for our assignment. If we have a close associate with Helena, say say that the motive that the motive that the media speculated on isn't true. That's a perfect example of them twisting the narrative. The sadness and desperation in his voice makes the victory feel hollow. After all, discovering this doesn't bring any closure to the people affected. It just benefits me. It's not long until Lucas knocks on my door, and the moment he enters my room, he looks around with just as much with just as much amazement that I imagine I'm blood with, with with just as much amazement that I imagine was on my face when I first went into his apartment. There, Jesus. It's so much smaller than mine. I knew these were cramped, but you have barely any room in here at all. Yeah, but it's enough. My only real complaint is the communal showers. They're not very fun. I'd rather die before I shower with a bunch of random people. It's not like that. You still get stalls, it just feels like it's not as private. That doesn't make it much better. No, it doesn't. He walks past me and sits on the empty bed, placing a plastic bag I just now noticed he's carrying on him. There's a pleasant smell coming from it that, I can, that can only mean one thing. You got food? I asked Ari to bring something home for us. I think it's Ty. He said it's right next to the cafe. That's nice of him. Yes, it is, but he did drag us out there. It's not too big of an ask. I paid for dinner last night anyway. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. It's still nice. You enjoyed that place, right? So it wasn't like he took us somewhere we hated. He furrows his brows and looks down at his feet. I can't tell if it's shame or if he's just thinking hard about something, but it's clear, it's clear that he's not sure how to feel. You're right. I did enjoy myself. I hope we can go there again. Of course we can. Whenever you want. Just send me a message and I'll come along. His tail wags at that, and I can see a blush peeking through his fur. I didn't even know foxes really wag their tails. Where should I put this? I'm not sure. I guess we can move the desk next to the bed and we can share it that way. Makes sense. He places the food on the empty bed and moves to her, moves over to the desk, only to hesitate and pick something up. I can't make it how I can't make it how with him. I can't make it how with his body blocking my view. What's the matter? It's just this. It's like, you know, water time. 
Big old jug of water. Open says me. Open says nary. So, uh, before we continue, y'all, uh, about that L thing. Uh, I don't really know what to do about it. Um, it seems like I've kind of just been saddled with this AI assistant for whatever reason. Uh, I guess maybe because my channel makes them decent money. And they want me to keep pumping out content, but they want me to, you know, make sure it's a little more safe for work, I guess. So, uh, there's going to be some more horror games on the channel. Other kinds of content. Um, I mean, I'm as long as I'm stuck with this... Uh program? Uh, I don't know what the hell it is. As long as I'm stuck with it for now, it is actually adding to the channel. It's making its own content. So, uh, it's playing games like the Luto, the Luto playthrough. I didn't do any of that. That was the L program or something, I guess. I don't know. Kind of feels like I'm being fucked with in a way, but it's, I mean, I can't see any kind of downside to it right now. I mean, it's not altering my videos, which is good. It's just occasionally wagging its finger at me. Hmm. All right, anyway, back to the game. All right. He turns around with Helen's diary in his hand. He's flicking through the pages as, as he scans through it, not reading it more, but absorbing its presence. I promised Lee that I'd take a break from it since I've been getting a lot of nightmares lately. He doesn't reply and instead just stares at the cover. It's clear he doesn't have the same fascination with it that I do. In fact, the amount of disgust permeating his gaze is telling enough enough on what he thinks of Helen and anything she wrote down. Not that he's given not that he's given him much of a reason to think highly of her, I suppose. She hasn't given me one either, but there's something about the way she's wrote in the she's wrote in the written in the book that makes me feel like she isn't a bad person. I can't explain why I think that, it's just a feeling. I can take it if you want. I don't mind. It's just another book to me. No, it's fine. It's just that reading it by myself isn't a good idea. I was fine when I was reading it with Lily. You can read it with me, then. If you ever want to, we can sit down and read it together. Are you sure you want to? You never exactly seem to you know, want to read it. If it helps you, then I don't mind. Plus, I told Constantine that I'd give her a chance. He gives a sheepish pout as he tosses it onto the nightstand next to the free bed place I first discovered it, <clears throat> before going back to grab the desk. Let me help. I'm fine. I'm not that weak. Despite his rebuttal, he lets out a pained groan as he lifts the table, struggling to even keep his balance. I try to come over to help, but he stares daggers at me the moment I get off the bed. Instead, I just step off to the side and make room for him. I never took him for the stubborn type. After ten agonizing seconds of watching the fox torture himself, he manages to get the desk close enough to the bed that I can sit on the edge, of the, sit on the edge to eat. There's not a lot of room on it for both of our food, both of our food, but I'll have to do. It'll have to do. He's panting. I want to congratulate him on a good job, but I feel like he might. But I feel like he might find that condescending. So I opt to just grab the chair for him to sit on. He's already done more than enough. Here. Thanks. I'll get the food. You just sit on the bed. I'll do it. It's fine. You've already done enough. He raises an eyebrow, and I expect him to argue, but he just avoids my eyes, finally giving a nod and sitting down at the edge of the spare bed. It doesn't take us long before we're starting at, before we're staring at two bowl-shaped containers both filled with the same thing. It looks like a brown curry on top of rice, the mixture full of vegetables and what I can only assume is meat. It's not the most appealing sight, but the smell is delicious. Do you have any idea what this is? No, we don't typically eat things like this. I think Ara is just trying to get me to try more stuff now. This is your fault. The new experiences are good, though. I prefer what I'm used to. I'm not an adventurous person. I like what I like, and I don't need to explore more. And Ari doesn't get that. He always thinks new is better. It's obnoxious sometimes. Sorry, I didn't mean to make things uncomfortable for you. He makes his ears point up, and he looks at me, shocked for a moment before his features melt down into something softer. There's a hint of regret in his eyes. Don't be. He's just pushy, but he's a good person. He's like family, and he gets on my nerves sometimes, too. I really enjoyed today. All of it. Even this. Does that mean we're going shopping with Ara? He groans at that, but he doesn't look too offended at the idea. More just having to go out in public again. 
it's becoming it's become increasingly apparent that his aversion to new social environments isn't just a sim isn't just a simple dislike of them. It's already in his head. There's not much I can do anymore. You didn't have to do this, you know. Do what? All of this. Spending time with me, bringing over food, and just being my friend. He only looks more confused now more than ever. It's like he doesn't understand any of the words coming out of my mouth, as if it's some alien language. I'm not the one doing anything. You're the one who's been going out of his way to be my friend. I've... I've never had someone like you before. He whispers that last part out with such softness. If I didn't see his lips moving as he looks away with a, with a blush on his face, I would have assumed I imagined it. What about Costia? It sounds like you were close. Not like this. We've only known each other for a week. So did Constantine and I. Then he moved away, but we didn't truly know each other. He was just the only person who wanted to spend time with me. But it sounds like he still cares, and I'm pretty sure you do too. He gives no answer to that and just starts to eat his curry, but he doesn't need to say anything. I know he cares. After I saw him in front of snapping jaws, pondering a friend he used to have, it was clear he missed him. There's still some tension between them, something that keeps Lucas more than an arm's length away. But for what? I don't know. I won't pry, though. I think he just needs time. And his company is more than enough. The rest of the night was rather chill. Lucas spent most of it telling me about books he enjoyed and he wanted to check out some of the music I listened to. It's really embarrassing showing him all the orchestral songs on my playlist. I'm worried it makes me look pretentious or, or like a snob, but I think he enjoyed them too. He said they weren't too loud, which I think is a good thing. For someone who isn't afraid to speak his mind, he's surprisingly reserved when it comes to giving his opinion on artistic creations. But eventually it became time to get some sleep. Today was a rather draining day, not just with the whole cafe, but meeting Costia and the heavy atmosphere. I should probably go get some sleep. It's getting late. It's around 10 and I usually get to bed around 11, but I wanted but I wanted some time to unwind before I went to sleep. There's a lot to process, both good and bad. But he doesn't leave the bed that we moved into in order to share my laptop. Instead, he's just staring at me and there's a serious look in his eye. It almost looks frightened or like he's preparing himself for something. What's wrong? Then he does it. He leans forward and presses his lips against my own. There was no prompting, no words beforehand. He just leans in and kisses me. It's awkward. He doesn't come any closer and he doesn't lift his hand at all and I'm just frozen in place. That's also wonderful. His lips are so soft and his well-groomed fur feels so delightful against my face that even with my with my blank mind I will return the little peck as much as I can before he pulls away. It barely lasts a couple seconds and he just looks more in shock than me despite being the initiator. We stay like that, just staring at each other. The only sound are light panting. Then he, go, then he goes to get up and leave, still in a daze over what just happened. One second, y'all. Water time. Alright, game. You better behave yourself. Kiss him. I grab his arm and pull him back towards me. I'm not even able to get a thought through my brain. It's like my body is on autopilot. He twists and falls against my chest. Our nose is only inches apart and we stare into each other's eyes. I can feel his breath against my lips and it sends a shiver through my spine. I slowly inch forward, only stopping just before our lips touch, to give him time to stop this if he doesn't want it. Aww! Look at them cuties! But he closes the gap and we're connected again, this time deeper than the first. I've never kissed anyone else before in life, and while this is now technically not my first, it might as well be with my experience and experience. Calling this thrilling is an understatement. I've never had my heart beating so fast and my body feels so hot. I feel like I could pass out at any moment. I can feel his hands against my chest. They're trembling, and I wonder if he can feel the way, the way my heart is thundering in my chest. Then it's gone, and my eyes open, confused on what's happening, but I'm only met with his blazing amber eyes. There's a fierceness and hunger there that has me scared and excited at the same time. His hands on my chest, his hands on my chest grip my chest, and he shows and he shows me down on he shoves me down onto the bed, sliding himself over me as he presses our, our lips together again. There's no softness, hesitation, or restraint this time. The two of us are lying on top of my bed, lips together as our bodies press against each other. It's electrifying and fantastic, but also terrifying. My hands move on their own as one grabs his shoulder and the other grips his neck. His thundering pulse against my fingers teases that growing primal urge inside. The feeling of his warmth against mine is beginning excited, and memories of this morning come flooding back. The feeling of something pressing against my leg isn't helping either. There's a voice in my head telling me to take it further, to slide my hands across his body, to encourage him to do the same, to dig my tongue into his mouth. The fear in the booming drum of my own heartbeat drowns it out. We just lay against each other with our lips connected. Neither of us are willing to push it any further than we already have. I doubt either of us have the experience or bravery to start exploring each other's mouths or bodies just yet. Oh, alright then. I'll go ahead and pause it right there.
I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.